On the evening of September 7, 1991, paramedics were called to the home of Robert and Joanne Curley in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Joanne told emergency technicians that her husband, Robert, was in unbearable pain. Though they could not immediately identify the source of the problem, they found his vital signs were dangerously low. The 32-year-old electrician was rushed to the hospital. Doctors there were already familiar with Robert Curley. They had treated him for a rare nerve disease just a few days earlier. At that time, Curley complained of pain in his hands and feet, as well as hair loss and severe nausea. Now, the escalation of Curley's symptoms caused them to reconsider their diagnosis. The hospital's neurologist quickly ordered new tests, this time for exposure to toxic chemicals. Two weeks later, doctors confirmed that Robert Curley was suffering from exposure to thallium, a toxic heavy metal. Thallium, a naturally occurring element, was widely used in pesticides until the early 1970s, but was banned from widespread use after researchers determined that exposure to concentrated amounts could be deadly. Its use is now restricted to industrial purposes. Forensic toxicologist to, Dr. Frederick Readers explains the effects of thallium poisoning. Uh, two or three. It's a nerve poison and it starts out very often with burning feet and then you start getting ascending paralysis. You know, you can't walk and then eventually you can't use your arms. Then your eyes start to droop and your neck starts to go and then your brain and your heart and everything goes. So it's a very insidious poison. For Robert Curley, the information came too late. The damage had already been done, and the effects were irreversible. After suffering a massive heart attack, he was placed on life support. Soon after, he was declared brain dead. Robert's wife, Joanne, gave permission for her husband's life support to be turned off. A few hours later, Robert Curley was pronounced dead. The official cause of death was cardiopulmonary failure due to thallium poisoning. Now they had to determine how and where he came in contact with the deadly chemical. A representative of OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, was sent to investigate. Joanne Curley stated that prior to his death, Robert had been working on a major renovation on the campus of a local university. That sounds good. Soon after he began the job, Curley complained to co-workers of flu-like symptoms. By the end of the first week, he could barely walk. He said his feet felt like lead. His colleagues noticed that he looked sweaty and red-faced. Robert Curley would spend the next month in and out of hospitals, going from one medical crisis to another. The facility where Robert Curley worked housed chemistry labs, as well as rooms where chemicals were stored, including five containers of thallium salts. OSHA investigators began a painstaking examination of the chemistry lab. They needed to identify the source and remove it before others were injured. The team took numerous air samples and exhaustively tested various objects and rooms to determine if there was another source of exposure. They came up empty. There were no signs of tampering or leakage from any of the containers. They learned that Curley was storing cabinets in his garage that he had taken from the university chemistry labs. They searched his home, but found no traces of thallium on the cabinets. With no answers to explain her husband's death, 
Joanne Curley contacted a toxicologist at the hospital. She seemed terrified that she and her daughter might also have been exposed. She demanded that they be tested for thallium. Joanne Curley tested positive, but the amount of thallium in her system was not at a toxic level. She would not require treatment. Her daughter had even smaller amounts in her system, about 10 times less than her mother. Robert Curley had over 900 times the lethal dose of thallium. Doctors insisted that the high levels of the toxic chemical could not have come through skin absorption. He must have ingested a fatal dose.